Hey everybody, how you doing? This is the next in my series of vlogs covering movies that I did not get a chance to cover in 2022. And now we are going to talk about Don't Worry Darling. This was directed by Olivia Wilde and stars Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, and Chris Pine. Pugh plays a woman named Alice, a 1950s housewife living in a utopian community with her husband Jack, played by Styles. The community is run by Chris Pine's character Frank, and during the day he and the rest of the men are off doing... Something. Something very important. Something that is going to change the world. What exactly is it? Well, apparently that's classified. But I'm sure there's nothing shady going on. And while the men are off doing whatever, the women are shopping and taking care of the house and cooking dinner and whatever the hell. But as a few strange things start happening, Alice starts to wonder just what in the hell all the men are up to and whether this idyllic community is all that it seems. So this movie kinda came and went, although when it came, it really came. And I'm not talking about the sex scenes. There was so much behind-the-scenes drama leading up to this movie. Of course, Shia LaBeouf was originally meant to play the part that Styles ended up playing, but there was some tension between him and Pew behind the scenes, and eventually he was let go from the project. He claims he quit. Olivia Wilde claims he was fired. What's the real truth? Who can say? In any case, Styles took over the role, and then he and Olivia Wilde started dating, and Pew was really upset about the whole experience and refused to do any PR for the film. And yeah, it was a huge thing. And evidently, the behind-the-scenes drama was more interesting than the movie itself, because once it finally hit theaters, the world responded with a resounding meh. And now that I've actually had a chance to see the movie... I'm a little surprised by its reception because I do agree the behind the scenes drama was more interesting, but the movie wasn't that bad. It was fine. I thought the cast did a pretty good job across the board. Pew was especially good, which does not surprise me. She starts out very happy and horny. This movie is so horny. But then she starts seeing these weird things and having these crazy dreams and everyone else treats her like she's going nuts. But is she? And they did a pretty good job of setting a very creepy vibe over this idyllic 1950s backdrop. Chris Pine's Frank in particular is just sleazy as hell and has no qualms about just gaslighting the shit out of Alice. I think what may have worked against this movie in the eyes of many is it's not a particularly original idea. It's very similar to M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, which itself was a very polarizing movie. But instead of people fleeing into the wilderness to escape society, it's a bunch of men forcing their women into some kind of virtual reality where they just cook and clean and shop all day because men are scum. Kind of like The Matrix, if The Matrix was run by Jordan Peterson. I would personally argue this is an M. Night Shyamalan concept done better, but improving on Shyamalan, not exactly a high bar. It's not really clear how these women are eating when they're trapped in this virtual reality. Maybe their husbands are just throwing food down their throat when they're breathing in the right direction. I don't know. There was one moment that did kind of take me out of the movie, though. There is a scene where they go to a nightclub, and while they are in this club, we hear Sing 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 playing in the background. And there is a band up on stage, and we are clearly meant to believe that they are playing this music, but... The instrumentation is not even close. Like, this is a big band arrangement of Sing Sing Sing, and I think they have, like, one guy with a trumpet up on stage, and that's the only wind instrument. And also, that same guy with the trumpet is also very clearly singing, and this arrangement of Sing 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 is, ironically, instrumental. So, there is absolutely no way in hell that they could possibly be playing the music that we're hearing. It doesn't match up at all. And I really have to wonder just how the hell that happened. They were clearly performing some other song while they were on set, and did they just not realize until after the fact, oh crap, we forgot to secure the rights and had to scramble and replace it at the last minute? I don't know, but it was really weird. And maybe if I wasn't very musically inclined, I wouldn't have noticed this, but I am, and boy did it stand out. So yeah, overall it's not fantastic. It's probably not gonna end up on my year-end top 10 or anything, but... Nowhere near as bad as the reviews would lead me to believe. It was fine. Like I said, not nearly as entertaining as the behind-the-scenes drama, but it was fine. If you have HBO Max, I'd say it's worth a watch. And that's all I have to say about Don't Worry Darling. Till next time, take care.